Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to Friday morning prayer. Friday, the 26th of April, 2024. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Now we come to our reading of the Psalms, and it's Psalm 33 we're going to read today. Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, their starry hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on the earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice. For we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we are as we put our hope in you. Amen. So a few thoughts there. The psalmist in this psalm calls upon the righteous to praise God. And God, of course, gives us all the things that we need and through that we must praise God. So he furnishes with matter for praise is another way of putting it, as Matthew Henry likes to write it. For his justice, goodness and truth appearing in his word and in all his works, we must praise him. For his power appearing in the work of creation, we must praise him. For the sovereignty of his providence in the government of the world. And again, he watches over those who fear him, as it says in the psalm. And we must thank God that he looks after us, those of us who trust in him. And for, of course, the special favour that he bears to his people, his chosen people, so originally the people of Israel, those who today, through faith in the Lord, will go to heaven. They are the chosen people of God today. Um, and the chosen people of God have always been those who have true faith in him. But of course, 
in the Old Testament, we talk about the people of Israel as being special in that. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So now we come to our Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading for today is taken from the book of Exodus. So Exodus. And we start to read in chapter 35 and verse 20. Exodus chapter 35 and verse 20 to chapter 36 and verse 7. This is about the work that the community do and the gifts they give for the, the tabernacle, the tent of worship. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting for all its service, for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewellery of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple or scarlet yarn or fine linen or goat hair, ram skin dyed red or other durable leather brought them. Those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord. And everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the work brought it. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun. Blue, purple or scarlet yarn or fine linen. And all the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat hair. The leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastplate, breastpiece. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. Bezalel and Oelab, Oelab, Oelab. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding and knowledge, and with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for working gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones to work in wood, to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. And he has given both him and Aholiab, son of Ahasimach, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work, as engravers, designers, embroiderers in purple, blue, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen, and weavers, all of them skilled workers and designers. So, Bezalel, Aholab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Aholab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary, and the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. Then Moses gave an order, and they sent this this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. 
So the people restrained from bringing more because what they had, what they had was more than enough to do all the work. So some thoughts about that. Here we go. So we've got offerings that were brought for the service of the tabernacle. And it's implied in the text that once they started the work, people were immediately prepared to bring offerings and be generous. And it said in Exodus 35, 21, their spirits made them willing and their hearts. So <clears throat> many, many of them were, had, were willing hearted is what it says, which also implies that some of them probably weren't, but most of them, many of them were. And the offerings that they made were of various kinds. <clears throat> many of the things they were offered were ornaments, bracelets and rings, tablets or lockets. <clears throat> and these rich things that they offered may well have come from Egypt. Remember, they plundered the people of Egypt when they left Egypt. And we may suppose remembrance of the offerings made for the golden calf when they went off, off the rails made them more zealous to do the right thing and do it for God. Remember, the work was done for the service of the tabernacle. And the women are identified um, and um, the work that they did is showcased in the text. They spun purple, blue and purple, um, all different types of yarn and fine linen, as well as the coarse work with the goat's hair. And that's showcased in the passage, isn't it? So good women's work for God, as well as the work of Bezaliel and Oelab. It's both of them, the men who are the experts and the women, the good women who do important work. They're all showcased in the text effectively for what they did. And then we move on to the appointment of, of the workers, the divine appointment of the two workmen that I've just described. Um, and he identified them by name and they had his spirit within them. But they were appointed not only to do the work, but also uh, to do the work, to plan, organise the work and to teach others to do the work. And the workmen, the workmen were kind of diligent. They set out without delay. And the materials which the people contributed were delivered by Moses to the workmen. Um, so the people contributed the materials and the workmen and the women, they uh, did the work on them, if you like. Um, so the spinning of um, spinning of the women and the work of the men um, in bringing together the materials and using them um, in their designs to worship God. And in a funny way, also in a kind of modern example, you could say, well, in the Old Testament there, they were literally building and using articles to do so, but actually God's temple today is a temple of people. And so the materials are not gold and silver, they're human hearts. And it's the Holy Spirit working on human hearts that we think about in today's worship and, and the building of God's temple. And you can see here that the workmen were honest. They 
they receive more than enough materials. And rather than continuing to receive the materials and not using them for building, but keeping them for themselves, they were honest about the fact that there was surplus material. And they said that the people should stop bringing extra material. And what we notice here is that it was necessary to do that because the people were very generous with what they had for God's service. So there was abundance that was contributed and the people carried on doing it until they were forbidden to do it. They were restrained. And they looked upon it as restraint for them not to be allowed to do more for the tabernacle. And that gives you a sense of the eagerness, the sense of worship that the people had. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Raise us up, O God, that when we may live in your presence. So now we come to our New Testament reading. And the New Testament reading is taken from Luke's Gospel and Luke's Gospel chapter 4 and verses 14 to 30. So Luke chapter 4 verses 14 to 30. Jesus rejected at Nazareth. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and rolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they said, they asked. Jesus said to them, surely you will quote this proverb to me, physician heal yourself. And you will tell me, do here in your own hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly, I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut up for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land, yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath, in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet, Yet yeah, not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. So now I have a meditation I'm going to read to you on that. So, meditation by David Runcorn, Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 30. Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What kind of sermon so infuriates its hearers that they try to kill the preacher? Historically, 
Nazareth and Galilee were where some of the ancient tribes of Israel originally settled. But in Jesus' time, it was heavily colonised by occupying powers. God's people endured the routine humiliation of daily life under foreign control, mourning their own lost history. It was hugely resented. In the synagogue, Jesus reads from Isaiah. The core of that prophecy is the promise that God will vindicate his people in the face of their enemies. In first century, any occupy, enemy occupied Galilee, God's people lived for that day, who wouldn't? But Jesus reads selectively. He omits precisely those verses that promise their exclusive vindication and restoration. Instead, he tells the story of God's favour and blessing to outsiders and holds them up as, an, as examples. A text of judgment was transformed into a message of grace and its hearers were incensed. So he's revealed the shocking, unbordered inclusiveness of God's love. And if it doesn't unsettle us too, perhaps we have not yet understood it either. The scandal of the gospel is that it is simply not fair. All this blessing, favour, mercy and love keeps falling into the hands of the wrong people. There in Nazareth, they either have to kill him or endure a theological meltdown. It's as serious as that. They really didn't like Jesus' teaching. And they wanted him to do miracles. And of course, he was saying that in his, in his hometown, it wasn't possible because they didn't really have faith in him like elsewhere. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. So now we come to our intercessory prayers. Dear Lord, we pray for de-escalation of the conflict between Israel and Iran. We pray for innocent people suffering as a result of the wars between Israel and Hamas and between Russia and Ukraine. Lord, we pray for the families of the World Central Kitchen aid workers who lost their lives as a result of being wrongly targeted by the IDF. Lord, we pray for just and lasting peace across the world. We pray for the success of the seaport floated to the shores of Gaza. We pray that aid would be successfully distributed from the beach. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for our world. Lord Jesus Christ, you love this world so much that you gave your life for the salvation of this world. We pray for every man, woman and child in every corner of our world that they will hear the gospel message and be transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for brothers and sisters in parts of the world where they're persecuted for their faith in you. Especially remember North Korea, Yemen, Nigeria and Pakistan. And dear Lord, we pray for those facing starvation for Somalia, Ethiopia, Afghanistan and Yemen. We pray that the richer countries would share food with the poorer countries. We pray for those affected by natural disasters. In particular, for those whose homes are being destroyed by wildfire or floods or earthquakes. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we especially remember Taiwan when we think of earthquakes and the recent earthquake there, but other parts of the world too. Dear Lord, we pray for our own nation, for the United Kingdom. Lord, we pray for safety in our schools. We think about the people who were stabbed in that school in Wales this week. Pray for the families of those who were stabbed, Lord. We pray for the school in Wales, but we pray for our schools that they will be safe more generally. We pray for safeguarding in our church as well, Lord. We remember the um, Orthodox priest that was stabbed in, in Australia, Lord, and we remember vulnerable people in congregations and we pray, Lord, that they will be safeguarded. We pray for young people with drug addictions and, Lord, young people caught up in peddling drugs. We pray, Lord, for improved resources for our health service. We pray, Lord, for humane immigration policy and that democracy in our society will be strengthened in the face of extremism. Lord, we pray for resolution to the various strike actions that have happened, whether it be our health service, education system or transport system. We give thanks where there has been resolution. We think of senior doctors, Lord. We pray for speedy and fair agreements to be reached with the government across the different areas. And dear Lord, we pray for kind legislation towards rough sleepers, Lord. We pray that that will be uh, modified or made to be kind. Dear Lord, we pray for wise governors of our whole country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for London, we pray for Newham, Lord, we pray for the mayoral elections. Lord, uh, we pray for Sadiq Khan, our current mayor, and Roxana Fiaz, the mayor of Newham, mayor of London, mayor of Newham. We pray for all those affected by poverty in our capital city and our borough. We pray, Lord, that the, that the rebuilding of Forest Gate Police Station will be hastened following the recent fire. And Lord, we pray for adequate funding for our children's hospice, Richard, Richard House, for faith in schools, for youth, for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for St Saviours. We pray um, for Cornelius, for his family, for Janetta and Atley, Lord, and um, we pray for our wardens, and for our PCC. Dear Lord, we pray you'll bless Cornelius at the service at the weekend where he's going to be made a canon in the Church of England. Dear Lord, we pray for our Sunday school, for young Christians together. We pray for the work of our food bank and the night shelter. We pray you bless Cornelius when he goes on sabbatical, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for the sick in our church, for those suffering from cancer in our congregation and our King and Lord, the Princess of Wales, eradicate the cancer. For those suffering with their mental health, bring them wholeness and well-being. Those struggling with painful arthritis, take away their pain. For those suffering from family breakdown, restore unity and trust. And dear Lord, for young people suffering from depression, lift their depression and bring them peace and joy. Dear Lord, we pray for Doreen, those on our prayer list, for Doreen, for Jean and Walter, for Monica, for Sue, Daisy and family, for Veronica and Chester, Dolly and Desmond, Jean Murphy, Joanna, Pat and Ray Vincent. We pray for Pauline Haywood.
We pray for Muriel. We pray for David Martins. Soraya Collar Johnson. We pray for Veronica, for Monica and daughter Cheryl, for Charity, Pippa, Duke, Radcliffe and Pauline, for Archdeacon Elwyn and family, for Andy and Anita, for Una, for Noel, for Jackie, Ambrose's sister-in-law, for Maxine Garrison and family, pray that they'd find suitable accommodation, for Atley, for Anne and Richard in Wales, for Elliot, friend of Jenny, for Jake, for Reverend Jeremy Fraser's son, for Kiana, Anne's friend, friend of Angela, granddaughter and her stepmother Lucy. And dear Lord, we pray for our young people who don't have faith in the Lord. May the Lord draw them to him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for those who've lost loved ones. Pray for members of our congregation who've lost loved ones. And we pray for Ray Lewis's family and the community of Eastside Young Leaders Academy. We pray for Tracy Frenton's daughter, Bobby, and for the family of Sue Fisher, who died recently. We pray for those who have lost loved ones through famine, war, natural disaster, including overturned migrant ships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we come to our collect. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> now we come to our song. Thank you. 
bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in life eternal. <clears throat> Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, let's live to the glory of God. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Amen. <clears throat>